greetings and welcome on this second Sunday of Easter Tide. We're so pleased and we're blessed that you've chosen to join us for, for this time of worship with us here at the Morgan Hill United Methodist Church. May the love of God and the grace of Christ, the, the friendship, the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you. Our vision as a faith community is to live in an inclusive, reconciling, progressive spiritual community that welcomes all people based on the teachings of Jesus. Just love one another. Here in this place, Christ welcomes all, and all are welcomed. Here, human diversity matters. Here, open minds matter. Here, prayerful hearts guided by spirit, rooted in scripture and tradition, reason and human experience matter. And here, God does not discriminate. Please join your hearts and, and your minds together as our lay servant minister, Trish Catalano, comes and leads us in our call to worship. Thank you, Trish. Thank you, Patrick. So last Sunday was Easter, a day on which the only fitting call to worship was an announcement of the event, the resurrection, the greatest act of life-saving imaginable. Though, it would, though God let us laugh at our own death sentence by punctuating it with a living exclamation mark, on this day and in the days to come, may we remember that there are times when God restates the joyful resurrection proclamation. Abilities faded and forgotten are channeled toward new creativity, and that's resurrection. Friendships, once killed by frosty misunderstanding, bloom again in warm reconciliation, and that's resurrection. Hopes glimmer and gone are rekindled by expressions of caring. That's resurrection. Faith, dulled by lack of exercise, dances again to God's everyday rhythms. And that's resurrection. So I invite you now to sing along to We Walk by Faith as the words appear on your screen and our church pianist Denise Melroy and Steve Cole come to lead us. so supportive in, in bringing us uh, music every week. And uh, here we are now celebrating 52 Sundays uh, online and providing uh, these uh, video worship services uh, to you all. And with their help, they make it very, very possible. Our gospel reading this week comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 20 verses 19 through 31. This gospel shows us that there are different kinds of faith, 
different kinds of ways of coming into belief. And that faith comes in different ways and with differing intensities to different people. The beloved disciple believes upon seeing the empty tomb in verse 8. Mary believes when the Lord calls her name. That happened in verse 16. The disciples must see the risen Lord from verse 20. And then Thomas. Thomas says that he must touch Jesus' wounds, although that need seems to evaporate once he sees the risen Christ in verse 28. People have different, differing needs and find various roots and ways to faith. I invite you now to hear the Gospel according to St. John. So later on that day, the day that Jesus rose from the dead, the disciples had gathered together, but fearfully, for the, for the temple and Roman authorities, had locked, they had locked all the doors in the house. And Jesus entered and stood among them. And he said, Peace to you. Then he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples, seeing the master with their own eyes, were awestruck. And Jesus repeated his greeting once again. Peace to you. Just as the Father sent me, I send you. Then he took a deep breath and he breathed into them. Receive the Holy Spirit. He said, if you forgive someone sins, they're gone for good. If you don't forgive sins, what are you going to do with them? But Thomas, sometimes called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we saw the master. But Thomas said, unless I see the nail holes in his hands and put my fingers in the nail holes, and stick my hand in his side. I won't believe it. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the room. This time Thomas was with them, and Jesus came through the locked doors, stood among them, and he said, Peace be with you. Then he focused his attention on Thomas. Thomas, take your finger and examine my hands. Take your hand, stick it in my side. Don't be unbelieving. Believe. And then Thomas said, my master and my God. Jesus said, so you believe because you've seen with your own eyes even better blessings are in store for you and for those who believe without seeing. Jesus provided far more God-revealing signs than are written down in this book. These are written down so that you will believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and in the act of believing, have real and eternal life in the way he personally revealed it. This, this is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
So where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church whose faith we support with our prayers, our presence, our giving, our witness, and our service. It is through our connectional giving that the people of the United Methodist Church make a huge difference in the communities that they serve. I invite you to give generously as we worship God through sharing our gifts, our tithes, our prayers for one another, our presence even online, our witness, and our service. Although we cannot put our gifts just yet in the offering plate on Sunday, we can visit our giving page on this website and see the opportunities to give either directly online or by using our mobile devices or through our vacants online payment system, always by mail. And remember, our gifts come from us, the people of God, for the work of God, to the glory of God in the world. Please pray with me. Holy God, we continue to hold on to the celebration and the triumph of Easter. As we look back over the past year, we realize that many of us can identify with Thomas Dowd. Can we be the church, the body of Christ, when we can't see the body gathered in our sanctuary? Yet Christ has opened our eyes to his risen body that can be confined by walls and is not diminished by precautions and social distance. As we make our gifts to you, we affirm the resurrection power that we have seen, and so we say again, Alleluia. This we pray as we live and we breathe and have our being and our movement within the very presence of the risen Christ. Amen. Please listen now as our United Methodist Denominational Choir sings for us to God be the glory. Amen.
to our United Methodist denominational choir, people from all over the world. That was wonderful. Always remember that nothing can separate us from the love of God shown to us in Jesus the Christ. Please keep in your prayers for peace, comfort, strength, and healing. Those struggling with life-threatening illnesses, as well as those who have recently lost loved ones and are struggling with their own grief and sadness as a family. Please remember in your prayers for strength and healing we keep in our prayers. Kim, Stephanie, Kathy, Chrissy, Denise, Dave, Beck, Trish, Barbara, Bodie, Kat, Alan, Cricket, Mitzi, Jalen, and Dan. And for peace and comfort, we keep in our prayers Anita's family and the Ryan's family. Also keep in prayer the concerns of the world as we continue to pray for the millions of families who have lost loved ones worldwide from COVID-19 virus and the people everywhere struggling with this infection on the anniversary of the pandemic. We also offer our thankfulness for the vaccines that are being distributed now worldwide to provide protection against this viral infection. And may the challenges and difficulties in distributing it be overcome so that there more may receive this needed vaccination. We pray for the safety of those caught up in these times of violence in our cities, especially for the grieving families and friends of those that have been killed in the recent mass shootings. Let us pray that more compassionate spirits, hearts, and minds will prevail over those who bring only chaos, hate, terror, and destruction. We pray for the safety of our police and for the continuation of justice being served on those who attacked our nation's capital, resulting in the evacuation of our elected lawmakers and staff members while the rioters occupied and vandalized the building. We do pray for the families of the five people who died, including the three police officers and more than 140 who were injured. We pray that justice will be served as upwards of 400 rioters and insurrectionists are arrested and held accountable. We continue to pray for our firefighters, our school teachers, and for the safety of our children as we begin reopening protocols for our schools. We pray for those who work in our grocery stores, our first responders, doctors, nurses, and all the medical personnel who are continuing to live through this pandemic. We also pray for the safety of uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris, and for the government representatives, both at the state and federal levels. Let us pray and write our elected representatives at the local, state, and federal levels, encouraging them toward a more cooperative government. We pray for the 15,000 plus migrant children now crossing the U.S.-Mexico border without their parents, who are seeking safety and protection from inhumane conditions and violence in Central America and Mexico. We continue to pray for support and protection and an effective response to the racism and those who per perpetrate violence against our Asian siblings. Please continue prayers for those in Europe as they are now facing a third wave in COVID-19 infections, and for our young adults who, as they travel to the coastal cities and back for spring break, may they use wisdom, common sense, and obey the laws, and that they wear a mask, um, and hopefully that they're not going to help perpetuate another surge of COVID-19 infections in the U.S. Please continue to email your prayer concerns to us here at the church office so that Pastor Patrick and our prayer team can keep your concerns in our prayers this week. For the prayer shared and those that remain in the silent places of our heart, we say to the Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Please pray with me. You call us to be people of faith, yet we are often people with doubts. We doubt that love can grow again in relationships where anger and bitterness reign supreme. You know the strength of love and the power of prayer. Help us to be faithful lovers. We doubt that peace can come in the Middle East, in Syria, and in Palestine, where hatred and racism reign supreme. You know that peace is growing here, growing there. Help us to be faithful peacemakers. 
We doubt that the hungry can be fed in Africa, where despair and homelessness reign supreme. You know that there is enough food in the world. Help us to be generous and faithful. You specialize in impossibilities. You walked on water. You healed the nations. You forgive sins. You set the captive free. And you set us free from our captivities. This morning we pray for people here who are filled with doubts, who wonder whether you exist and whether you are listening to our prayers, who wonder what this whole community is about. We pray for people who doubt the purpose of life, who wonder and whether to end it all, who face feelings of meaningless and despair. Even when we have that sinking feeling, give us the wisdom to turn to you. Lord, we want to believe. Help our unbelief. Give us faith small as a mustard seed so that we could be your faithful people, believing in your power to save, believing in your power to reign supreme, believing that we can share this good news with everyone we meet. This we pray with one voice as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, you know what? There was a lot of stuff in those verses that we had Pastor Patrick, who read so brilliantly, to deal with all in this time of a very little bit short sermon. So I'm going to do my best. Um, but we need to look at Thomas, especially since the title of the sermon is Unless I See, and that's Thomas's favorite or famous quote, I guess. Um, my husband's middle name is Thomas, and he says that's why he doubts everything in the world, is because that was his saint. I'm like, okay, if you believe that, you know. <laughs> but we need to look at Thomas, since it's his words that gave the title for this week. But we'll come back to him in a moment, because it's also the whole Pentecost theme, theme that appears in John's Gospel. He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, in verse 22. This is very different from Luke's version that appears in Acts, with tongues of fire and mighty winds. It's maybe a quieter, gentler Pentecost, perhaps. But, I know, I'm putting a lot on you. I'm going to put that one aside into the purse for later. Then there's always that pesky, you know, if you forgive the sins of any, then they are forgiven. If you retain the sin of any, then they're retained in verse 23. Yeah, that one hasn't caused centuries of abuse of power from the hierarchy of the church, or so caused self-righteous Christians to think it's their job to be judgmental and to point out all the specs while conveniently overlooking the laws. But hey, he did say that we have power to determine what sins are bad ones and which ones don't really matter all that much, right? Well, no. But again, another good one. I mean, right here we already have four weeks of sermons, but we'll put that one in the purse for later also. Sorry, that one sounded good. Even I got a chuckle from the pastor. Then there are those curious verses at the end that seem to open the door to all kinds of stuff. Like, Maybe it's possible that Jesus kind of, sort of, wants us to think for ourselves sometimes. That we've got to take his life and teaching and then apply it to stuff, you know, that he never took the time to tell us about. Or that John and the others didn't take the time to write down what Jesus said about, you know, hedge funds and immigration. You think, maybe? Well. Yeah. Guess what? It goes into the purse for someday we'll go back to that one also. But right now, what occupies our thinking are the, those doors. So, Easter morning, he is found to be risen. He's not in the cave. By Easter evening, they were locked. The doors were locked. Locked for fear, John says. But they were locked up tight. 
The disciples were locked in behind the doors, behind piles of furniture too, perhaps. Blinds may have been drawn on the windows and nobody moved, just in case someone below might have heard the footsteps of the floors. They were huddled, hunkered down behind the doors. And so who was there? Well, Thomas wasn't, we learned that later. But so who does that leave now? Because Judas is gone, so that would be 10 maybe? But maybe there might be more because see in the Gospel of John, the word disciples, well, it's a slippery term to mean lots of different things. It's not just the 12 usually. John rarely talks about the 12. He's interested in the big crowd kind of numbers. So the 12, well now 10, plus the women who were there and maybe others. And at one point, I think Jesus sent out 70. So maybe there were 70 or 68 in that room, crowded in, avoiding eye contact, which would be hard if there were 70. Well, maybe less, maybe 10, maybe a few more. But, and if the women were there, did they try again? Look, Mary of Magdala says, it's him, he's alive. And you answer, yeah, sure, Mary. Maybe your demons have come back, huh? Just saying. And didn't you think it was the gardener? You have no idea who it was, do you? It was early, you were up all night, none of us slept. You must have been dreaming. No, it was him. He said my name. When he said my name, I knew it was him. She crossed her arms and turned to Peter and John, who were really just trying hard to be interested in the pattern of the rushes that had been thrown on the floor. You were there. You came running right in like your shorts were on fire. You dashed into that tomb. What did you see? The silence that hung in the air behind those locked doors. Nothing. They saw nothing. Not what they expected to see, not what they had hoped to see, but they saw nothing. So now they sit, comforted by nothing, afraid of everything, hoping locked doors would save them. Well, they didn't, because Jesus came. Well, that's what John says. The doors were locked and Jesus came. How did he come? Don't know, John doesn't say. He just came. Peace be with you. He had to say it twice because the first time they didn't hear it for fear of him. So he sighed, showed his hands, showed his side. Then John says, then they rejoiced. How long did he stand there banging on the doors, hoping someone would let him in? Jesus, who had earlier that morning burst through a stone door, now appeared through a locked door and said, Peace be with you. Then Thomas shows up. How much later? Well, we don't know. It's just later. They tell him, those almost 70 or maybe 10 disciples tell him, We saw the Lord. And Thomas says, Yeah, sure. He goes, Thomas, why do you doubt? Because the doors were still locked. We saw the Lord. He showed us his wounds which had healed. He offered us peace and he gave us power and he sent us out to forgive. Yeah, the doors were still locked. Well, a week later, the doors were still locked. The truth is none of them truly believed. They saw, but they hadn't believed yet. Not enough to open the door anyway. Not enough to venture out. Seeing isn't always believing. Or maybe there is seeing, and then there's seeing. Seeing with our eyes doesn't always lead to seeing with our faith. So a week later, the doors were shut, but Jesus came in anyway. With a sigh, undoubtedly, but he came. He, had to, he came to show them what they needed to see. And just like he shows all of us what we need to see. Remember, that's the Easter proclamation. He is going before you, going back home, going to familiar territory, going where you belong, where you live and work, 
and there you will see him. That's the promise, and that's what we are offered. And we are offered it, we will see him. But wait, what about that blessed are those who haven't seen yet believe? What about that one? Well, I think he threw that in because he heard the locks turning on our own doors, and he wanted to pry them open. Maybe coming through locked doors was strenuous. Maybe it was painful. Or maybe he just wanted to spare us the false security of locked doors. Just be open enough to see him in our midst, showing us his wounds, the brokenness of this world, the suffering of Christ on the backs and sides and hands of our siblings, but also to see the grace and the forgiveness that is poured out even on us, just when we're sure that we won't get it or deserve it. Just when we are afraid and we can't have it, and we turn to push the doors closed against the world because it's just too cruel to live in, too empty of him, or so we think. But still, he's there. He doesn't like our locked doors. We try to shut him out like we shut out a cat on the wrong side of the door. We act like we don't see him. But Jesus is persistent. He keeps banging. He appears with a shaft of light that's, light that's almost blinding. And then he says to each of us, peace be with you. So time to celebrate and I guess unlock those doors that we have locked. Um, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, it says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And we have two birthdays to celebrate again this week. We have Miss Sophia O with a birthday. Her birthday is April 9th. Happy birthday, Sophia. And Kendall has a birthday on April 11th. Happy birthday, Kendall. And now on to our announcements. Leadership team meets second Sunday of each month. And oh, ding, ding, ding. That's today. So tonight, our meeting is tonight. Don't forget, it's tonight. 7 p.m. I'll be the one that will probably forget, but I'm trying. 7 p.m. Look for the Zoom link and um, agenda that will be out, should be in your emails. So we want to say thank you so much for watching our weekly worship. We do appreciate it so much. Please invite one, two, ten, seventy, yeah, somewhere in between the women, the men, Amen. the boys, the girls, all of them, to watch as well. We really appreciate it. Um, we will continue to deliver our church to go bags on Saturday mornings and pick up grocery items to be delivered to our food bank in Morgan Hill called Reach Out until we begin our in-person in -person worship. And at that point, then we'll send out a virtual to go through email and that will include, continue to have the bulletin and other things that will enhance your worship experience. So our benediction, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am now sending you. So he believes in you. The busy world awaits your compassion. Because God believes in us. Sometimes you will give your best, yet fail. God believes in you. At other times you will succeed in spite of your stumbling. Because God believes in you. So go gladly, daring to succeed or to fail to the glory of God. And then at the very end, nothing shall dismay you. Because God believes in you. With Christ's own breath within us, we shall travel well. The help of the saving Christ, the wisdom of the living God, and the support of the loving Spirit be with you every step of the way, now and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is Amen. Please sing along to words as they appear on your screen. And God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And maybe open the door just a little bit. Amen and amen. Thank you.